while wrapping up the previous video on the power gant, I found out that Nova Silva has other visuals as well, such as this one. It's the milestone trend analysis, and it's a very cool visual, uh, but it might need some further explanation before we dive into actual Power BI. So let me draw up what a milestone trend analysis should do. Let's dig in. So we're discussing the milestone trend analysis and it has a Y axis and an X axis. Both are representing time. So we have our X axis and Y axis and the top bar goes from left to right and represents your reporting dates. Then on the left side, it goes from bottom to top regarding our milestone dates or the scheduling dates for your milestones. So the earliest date is on the bottom and the latest date is at the top. And then there is a divide. And once a milestone crosses that divide, that milestone should be complete. And then you start populating it. On reporting dates, you um, look at your schedule and you look at the scheduling date and you put that on this axis, like so. And if it goes lower, so more to the words, the bottom, it's actually better. And if it goes up, it's actually worse. And we'll dive into that in a bit, but this is a milestone trend analysis. So let's see that in Power BI. So here we have that app source, the milestone trend analysis chart by Nova Silva. It's Power BI certified, which means it shows up in printouts and a lot more cool stuff uh, related to Power BI certified visuals. You can add it, you can download in a sample to have a closer look. So here is our example visual. Let's zoom in a little bit and have a look at what we're seeing here. We have different colors representing the different milestones in our schedule. We have our scheduling dates and we have our reporting dates. And as you can see, time moves from left to right and from bottom to top. So if I look at, for instance, the business case, this is a milestone that was reported on first on the 1st of January. And it was close to closing down at the end of March. So if we move down a bit, we see that the date is a little bit different. It is going down, at which is better because it will cross that finish line that we talked about at the beginning sooner. And then we see our next dot is moving a little bit to the top. So that is later. The scheduling date for that milestone is later in time, so we are doing worse. And we have a better example of that in this section. But let's talk a little bit more about the report that we're seeing. So on the left, I have my data. I have my building A and B. Uh, I have my milestones and I have my scheduling dates. Now, in this uh, table, you won't notice big issues right up front. That's why we have the milestone trend analysis. Furthermore, I have the chiclet slicer that is used for um, filtering between the two projects. And if I look at building A, we see a slightly different value in our report because the report looks at all projects and averages that out. Um, but if we select a single value, and we see different values popping up in the milestone trend analysis. So let's have another look at that building A. What we see happening in March and April is big differences. And if we look closely to the initial design approved, the initial design approved, we see that these dates pop up. Looking in the table, there's not direct alarm bells uh, popping up. We see that this date is much more in the future than all the others. So this is actually a problem which automatically popped up in the uh, milestone trend analysis. So we see that the original date is in June and then all of a sudden we're in July and the next update 
we're doing quite well and we're closing this milestone again in March. That averages out nicely in a finished milestone date on the 29th of May. So how did I create this milestone trend analysis? It's actually a quite simple, um, it's actually a quite simple visual in sense of values that it needs. It needs a milestone date. It needs a, sch a scheduled date for that milestone. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. And then we have the dates on which those dates were reported. So one of the crucial things on having this visual and working with this visual is that you have to track your history. So be it in Excel, be it in SQL, somewhere there needs to be a track on when dates are reported and what those dates are. So in my example, I used Microsoft Excel. So in this Excel, you'll see two tables. We have our milestone table, table milestones, and we have our table projects. And in it, we have our project name, we have our phase name, we have a milestone ID, which is useful for some of the configuration we'll see today. And we have our milestone name as well as a type. And then we have our reporting dates and the actual dates that we recorded in our schedule. Now, of course, this is a fictional example, but, but using snapshotting tools such as the Power Hub by Projectum can, re, uh, can result in an automatic tracking of these dates in all of your schedules. So this is my Excel, and this is the project with its phase, phases and start and finish. So let's get back to my report, and let's have a look at the milestones and project phases as it looks in Power BI. So the milestones look a little bit different because there's a whole lot of more data. And the reason why that is, is because I need to have the reporting dates and the scheduled dates next to each other so that I have them as selectable values. Now, how did I do that? Let me show you that in the Power Query Editor. So in here, I have my source, which is a uh, OneDrive Excel file. I have my navigation and I'm navigating to the milestone table that we had in the Excel. And at that moment, I select all the dates that I have for my reporting dates and I unpivot the values. So I have all my scheduling dates or sorry, where I have all my reporting dates and I select all of them, move all the way to the right, selecting them all, right clicking and clicking on unpivot only selected columns. This results in the pivot or the unpivot where the column name is transformed to become a column itself and the values are transponed to it. So in here we have all these dates for that single milestone next to each other. So let's click on close. Let's navigate back to our project. And with that, it is very simple. Let me show you what I mean. Once everything is gone, we have our milestone trend analysis. Nova Silva has a get help value here, as well as a contact moment. Um, very lovely documentation most of the time from their end. So opening up milestones, we have our milestone name, and then we have our reporting date. So the date on which we track all of our schedules. And then we have our scheduling date, which is the milestone date. And there we are back again with our lovely milestone trend analysis. Now we can do another thing with the milestone trend analysis, which I really like is we can plot that on a Gantt chart. So let's move to our next slide. 
And in this slide, I have my reporting months, I have my project name, and I have the power gained by Nova Silva. So what I see here is I have my <clears throat> I have my phase and I have my milestone and I have my reporting dates. So as we move closer to the end of the year, we see less of the values because other uh, milestones have already finished. Looking at the final design, and if I hover over, I get my milestone trend analysis for that single value, which is lovely. And there we go. And it looks exactly as it does in the milestone trend analysis sheet, only specific for that final design or that production. Uh, you see if we're doing better or worse. In this case, we're doing worse. In this case, we're doing slightly better. So how did I create this tooltip? Let's select the power again. Here we have our milestone ID. Remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this is a requirement for this visual. So we have the milestone ID, which is unique. Then we have our project name as a parent. Then we have our phase name and we have our phase start and end. And I used columns for this to keep everything in one single table. Uh, the DAX query is rather simple. It's related pro uh, project phases, phase start, and then the date. And same goes for the end, only it now looks at the phase finish date. So what you do in the power again, you select a milestone ID, which is unique. Then we have our phase name and all the way down. If you remember from the previous video, we have our milestone date, which is the schedule date. Then we have our milestone name and then we have tooltips. And the tooltip was uh, selected by going into the format, general, then tooltip. And I have a report and that report is the page tooltip. So let's navigate to that tooltip. Here you have the tooltip on full screen, obviously, and how you do that is you go into view, you go into page view, and you have your actual size, which is way smaller. Uh, but you can also see fit to page uh, in order for you to have a closer look and format it uh, as correctly as you can. Now, one of the biggest differences or the only difference between the earlier ve uh, version of the milestone trend analysis and the current one is that I changed the Y axis. Now, why did I do that? I went into the Y axis and I selected date type auto. By default, it will show up as month, which on average, it looked great. It looks exactly the same, but looking from the power again, again, there's a big difference. When hovering over one of these values now, I see a less than useful version of the milestone trend analysis because the Y axis is locked on months. And because the variation is less than a month on all of these values, it's not useful. So we're not seeing the values that we actually wanted to see on the on the Y axis. So let's go back to tooltip. And I see that I did another change. I, I removed the buttons or the the dots. So let's go back to format. Y axis and set this to auto. That way the Y axis will automatically look at values that are useful and it will populate the values that you might want to see in, um, in your graph. Now, another thing that I changed was the line styles, which I had the show markers. I've turned that off because otherwise it looked like this, which doesn't make sense for a tooltip. It's redundant information. This makes perfect sense though. Now that I come to think about it, there's no way of showing the actual dates of the top and the bottom values. 
might want to have that in um, in the next iteration of this tool. Looking at the Gantt chart again, we see we see the visual as uh, we presented that at the beginning with the dates within August, uh, the, the changes that we see for our milestone trend. One thing to note is that little eye icon here, you are using a free version of the Power Gantt. You are using a free version of the Power Gantt visual and the free version of the milestone trend analysis. This isn't a problem when you're working in Power BI desktop. Remember that video on the Power Gantt? It's a very aggressive watermark telling you that you are using a free version and you should buy a license to showcase this in dashboards as well. I'm very happy that this visual popped up because this has been something that I was looking for quite a while. And I even chatted with the founder of Nova Silva and he mentioned that, yeah, we were looking for it as well. We couldn't find it, so we created it ourselves. I love that attitude. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.